Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're just going to wait a few few uh, second or minutes. I mean, for people to log on. In the meantime, though, I would really like to know if you guys know anything about shochu. So please put it in the chat um, to all panelists and attendees. If you've ever encountered shochu before, if you've ever tried it before, what's your favorite way to drink it? We were actually just at a Okinawa um, awomori, so like that's a type of shochu uh, and food pairing event yesterday, and it was it was amazing. <laughs> um, it, it was pretty interesting to see uh, pork belly. Um, stewed with brown sugar and paired with bitter melon with awamori. It went perfectly together. So Naoko Okada-san is saying, Aka Kirishima is my favorite. That's a pretty solid one. Wendy Lin said it's aromatic and she loves it. Mark Goldberg, I'm pretty sure he's saying this sarcastically, but what's shochu? <laughs> we'll get into it. Um, more bartenders are using shochu for cocktails. I actually, I have not realized that. I guess I just haven't been out now <laughs> ever since we've been in quarantine. Gordon says he's been drinking shochu straight these days. I mean, who hasn't been drinking everything straight these days? <laughs> Napoleon shochu, recommended by my brother from Noriko Aoi-san. That's interesting. I've never heard of that one. With hot water. Wendy says she's been seeing them making cocktails and webinars. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's wait maybe like one more minute. Hey, someone from London. There is, hello from London. Um, Nicholas, I hope I'm saying that right. I, he likes shochu oyuwari with umeboshi on the bottom. That's pretty good. I actually haven't had too many people do it that way. That's a very traditional way to have it as well. Ah, uh, yes, sake mas shochu. That's definitely a must try. Shochu on the rocks, more for emo, and then some for mugi. Yeah, definitely different types of shochu taste better, like on the rocks or straight. Some are better oyuwari. All right, okay. <clears throat> thank you everybody for joining us today. And thank you for all your wonderful responses in the chat. We love people who participate. So just to introduce myself, my name is Ida Vong. I am a sake specialist for Sake School of America, but I also work for Mutual Trading. And today I am joined by Kota Kimura. So he is from the Consulate General of Japan in Los Angeles, as well as Toshio Ueno-san. So he's the co-founder of Sake School of America, and he was also the 2016 Sake Samurai, as well as a 2020 Awamori Jinbunar. And if you wonder what that is, we actually have events later on this month explaining what that is and going over Awamori in more depth. Um, so just to give you a quick uh, outline of what's gonna happen, uh, Muro-san's gonna say a couple words and then we're going to dive into the kind of quick and dirty 101 for Shochu from Ueno-san. And at the very end of this, we'll have a quiz so it'll be three questions. It's gonna be multiple choice. And if you do get all three correct, you'll be entered into a final drawing to see if you will win the free um, Shochu Advisor course that we teach at Saki School of America. So make sure you take notes. Um, we will be going through things a little bit quickly. And at the end, we'll also have a Q&A. So any questions you might have, we'll try to answer those. And then we'll have some final remarks. All right, Kimura-san, thank you so much for joining us today. Please take it away. Hi, uh, can you hear me? 
Okay, uh, thank you so much for your introduction. Uh, my name is Kota Kimura from Consulate General of Japan in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm in charge of promoting Japanese cuisine here in Los Angeles, including this Anno Spirits, Shochu. Uh, everyone knows about Japanese sake and Japanese whiskey here, uh, but someone, uh, somehow uh, Shochu is not known. Uh, shochu, as you know, Shochu has 500 years history with a uh, wide variety of taste and flavor that I guess uh, Mr. Ueno would explain about it today. Uh, so I believe shochu is a new ingredient uh, that relatively unknown and uh, not known, uh, but uh, had great potential like Japanese whiskey. Uh, to promote these spirits from Japan, shochu, uh, I'm working with Mr. Ueno, uh, my teacher regarding shochu, uh, to hold a series of events uh, in this February. Uh, we call this month uh, as Japanese Craft Spirit Month. Uh, in this month long promotion, uh, we prepared a lot of events uh, collaborating with uh, many people, including Mr. Ueno, uh, that you can, uh, you can enjoy to run what is shochu, as well as uh, awamori, uh, Okinawa based spirits. So please check the website and SNS uh, for your joining uh, to the series of the events. Uh, Ida-san, could you show us the uh, picture for... For... Uh, for uh, the PowerPoint I uh, posted, but... Uh, okay, uh, it's okay. Let me... You should be able to share your screen. Okay. Okay. okay, I want to do that. Uh, well, perhaps, uh, you can uh, check uh, JapaneseCraftSpirits.com, uh, the website uh, about the uh, shochu and awamori. Uh, so please check the website and uh, SNS too, uh, SNS uh, hashtag uh, Japanese Craft Spirits uh, for your joining to the series of events. Uh, today, uh, today is a kickoff. Oh, this is the website. Thank you so much. Uh, this uh, website includes an event calendar uh, that has full of events. So yeah, today is a kickoff. Thank you so much for yeah joining us. Uh, today is a kickoff to start Japanese Craft Spirit Month. So let's enjoy the world of shochu uh, with Mr. Ueno. Uh, before forgetting, uh, I I want to introduce Mr. Ueno as the Japanese cuisine goodwill ambassador. Uh, he, he was appointed by the Japanese government as the ambassador to promote Japanese cuisine, including shochu. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Ueno. And I believe uh, you keep your work to promote the Japanese cuisine, including this relatively unknown ingredient, shochu. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, ida san thank you so much. Thank you, Akimura-san, so much. and. Uh... I'm so honored to uh, be appointed as an ambassador for Japanese cuisine. Thank you. Let's start the uh, uh, seminar. I know many of you are uh, having been to our uh, webinar before. But you know, some people are new, so I'm just gonna go through uh, for this event because we are having many shochu and amori men in this month. But for kind of reviewing what is shochu and amoris are, so you can enjoy it, uh, this uh, February's uh, shochu, I mean, Japanese craft spirits month. So you know, Japan is located in here and I should have a pointer somewhere. Japan is right here. So uh, the climate of Japan is uh, greatly affected by continental of China. So the winter time, uh, the cold wind comes from uh, Russia and China to Japan. So it's very cold and we, got, we get a lot of snowing and summertime is the opposite. So this going this direction. So the warm wind uh, is coming from Pacific to uh, inland and uh, summertime is very, very hot and uh, winter time is uh, very cold. And here's a, a 
a closer map of Japan. This is Honshu. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this is Hokkaido, Honshu, Kyushu, Shikoku. These are the major islands we have. And most of that uh, shochu is made here in southern part of Japan, Kyushu and Okinawa regions, which are about 40, 60, 67% of the shochu, uh, shochu makers are here, located in here. So mainly uh, in these regions, okay? And uh, let's go back to the history. History, as uh, um, Mr. Kimura was saying, we have about 500 years of the history. The, all that the distillation uh, technique uh, part still is coming from uh, Mesopotamia, which is uh, Iraq uh, in these days. And one went to west and one went to east. And it's coincidentally, in where Scotch whiskey started from early 16th century and also shochu is a very uh, same time, okay? And this is a lout where how the shochu was introduced to Japan. There's a three louts, one from China to Japan or uh, from China to Korea, Korea to J Japan or from Thailand to Okinawa and then Kyushu and mainland. But that are, uh, by the historian uh, going through the in, uh, scientific investigation, it's most likely uh, it's coming from Thailand because we had a uh, the Ryukyu kingdom, Okinawa had a long time uh, cultural and economical uh, relationship with Thailand. And back in those 500 years ago, it was much quicker to transport item on the ocean than the land. So coming from the Iraq on the land or uh, coming from here to the ocean route and came here. The reason why I said is this, let's say you are from here like Osaka and then on the land, it takes about by walking because we didn't have any train or anything. So it takes about, about 10 days, but on the ocean, it takes about four and a half days. So it was, you know, half of the time, much, much uh, quicker way to, uh, to travel and also transport item back in those days. And the first record of shochu in Japan is uh, 1559. These two brothers were working on the shrine and uh, they lit in this, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, complaints that, that, that the monk was so stingy, he did not offer us any shochu. So brother was basically uh, complaining this, uh, 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 the, their complaint on this wooden piece underneath that, that uh, uh, the ceiling, and it was found in 1954. So this was the first mentioning of shochu. So already in 1559, the shochu was already uh, existed in Japan. I said, I was looking for the graffiti, but it didn't come out right. So many people ask me, what is shochu? And this is an analogy I use uh, lots of times because um, you know shochu is you know distilled spirits. So when you distill sake, it becomes shochu, like a beer and wine. Beer, when you distill the beer much, it becomes whiskey. And if you distill the wine, uh, uh, the uh, grape juice, ferment it after fermentation, and if you distill them, become brandy. So. That's how, what's a, the difference between brewed alcohol, brewed alcohol and distilled alcohol, okay? Hey, really quickly, Ono-san, um, somebody is just a little worried. Is it possible to get a PDF of the slides afterwards? Uh, yes, some parts, not all of them, but that I can, yes. Okay, so okay. we'll send out what we can, guys. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Here's a, uh, um, so this is it. And, but uh, all, the biggest difference between European spirits 
and Japanese spirits. Same as sake, we use koji. You have to use a koji to make uh, shochu and aomori. For whiskey and brandy, they do different, uh, they use malt. So that's the biggest difference there. And, you know, that's why, you know, shochu is very unique uh, fermented uh, food culture you're using uh, koji. And also uh, brandy, especially brandy whiskey, uh, so they are distilled by single, I mean, pot still, but they do distill many times. But for shochu, it's a single pot, pot distillation only once, okay? And there's so many way of uh, uh, drinking shochu. So that's another thing. And also here it says hot and cold. You know, we have hot shochu like a sake hot. Shochu has a hot one too. So that's very, very unique. Here I'm showing you another uh, uniqueness uh, because we use a koji microbe. Uh, koji is a microbe fungi, which convert the starch to sugar. But you know, as I said, it's different from wine, and the reason why is a wine. Uh, it starts from grape. Grape has sugar, and if you add yeast, it starts fermenting and and become a wine. And beer is a little bit more closer to sake and shochu because they do have a multiple distillation to become a beer. But for sake, shochu, and aomori, the conversion of starch to sugar, we call saccharification, and also alcohol fermentation by yeast uh, takes in the same tank at the same time. So we call them multiple parallel fermentation, which is very unique to Asian spirits, okay? Especially in Japan. And a microbe uh, we use uh, was koji. There's are uh, many types, but these are three major ones uh, used in Japan. Uh, yellow koji is usually used for sake, miso, soy sauce, and black koji is for amori and shochu, uh, but for amori, you have to have you have to use black koji, okay? And then uh, mutant of black koji uh, is a white koji. One day, Dr. Kawachi was trying to find high enzymatic uh, uh, spore out of this black koji and he found a uh, white one and uh, he took it out and inoculated it himself and it became white. And white became really, white koji became so popular because it gives you a little bit more lighter, cleaner uh, flavor. So people start appreciating that, become popular. But now, black koji is coming back. Number one uh, shochu right now in Japan is uh, using black koji, actually. And so using that microbe, you have, let's say, uh, making uh, rice-based product, rice-based shochu. You put the koji mold onto the steamed rice and mix them. And these are the, the spore growing onto the rice. Looks like this, okay? And this is how the koji was, the, I just saw the koji making right here. And after that, you will mash them and ferment it for the fast ferment is made. And then you have a main uh, ingredients, which are sweet potato in this case. Uh, you wash them and uh, cut them, and then you steam it and mash it and add it to this fast mash and ferment. And after 10 days, you distill them and have a shochu coming out, okay? So that's, I just mentioned multiple fermentation, but you, you might not, didn't uh, not get what I was, uh, what it meant, mean, because starch itself uh, in the grains is too big for yeast to eat them. So that when you grow this microbe onto the koji microbe onto the steamed rice, it will start breaking down this starch to sugar and then yeast can eat it and produce alcohol and heat and a CO2. But this is all happening in one tank at the same time. That's why we call multiple parallel fermentation. 
And you should know starch is a chain of sugar, actually. And uh, it's, um, you know, uh, it's located in or uh, shredded it in, in net over proteins. So you have to break down the proteins to become a sugar. And then, uh, you know, uh, there's a, a few different types, but mainly when we talk about Japanese honkak shochu or authentic shochu, we are talking about the single distillation. And uh, alcohol contents can go up to 45% alcohol ABP. And then that single, uh, single distillation part has a two type, natural uh, atmospheric uh, pressure and also vacuum. So when this vacuum is used, the pressure goes down like this. When you are in a uh, you're in a high mountain, trying to boil the water, water, and that water is not doesn't uh, it gets boiled much easier than uh, you're in the atmosphere. I mean, a lower uh, lower plains or uh, valley or city side. Uh, you know, boiling temperature of uh, water is 212, but if you're in a high mountain with lower pressure. You, it's that the, the boiling temperature is much lower. So it, what does it mean is this. So this is a vacuum. These component compa compounds are easy to uh, this become a distrates or become a liquid and it's easy to evaporate. But so some of the, uh, the compounds or uh, components stays in here, meaning all the clean lighter alcohol will be distilled. But here in the regular atmospheric uh, atmospheric distillation, it doesn't happen that way. So you're distilling so many other things at the same time. So you get more uh, flavors in it compared to this. Okay. So most likely you get a little bit more flour on this side flowery, full of aroma and lighter, and you don't have so much uh, complexity comparing it to this regular still. And then depending on that, I mean, you have, you know, some of them has more fruity floral aroma and other one might, might have more like a caramelized vanilla to some grassy nose to some caramelized nose to uh, you, a little bit more oily ones too sometime. So depending on that, but most likely that that one we just talked about the vacuum one is more this side. And regular, regular one has a more complex flavor, which are uh, uh, created by so many other things. But for fruity aroma, you get from fatty acid reacting to isomeric alcohol and become isomeric acetate. It's too technical, but I know there are some uh, uh, sake and shochu geek in this seminar. So I'm just, ex yeah, uh, I just explained this. And also the other one is h recuperate is coming from uh, ethanol and some uh, fatty acid reaction and become this, okay? And another thing you should know uh, as a flavor components is, uh, you know, uh, the vanillin, uh, vanilla aroma, okay? Vanilla ice cream aroma is coming from this. Uh, furic acid become a, Four vinyl grugua ayako. That's a difficult one, the long one too. And they become vanillin. And the other one is we call mushroom alcohol, which is octanol, uh, smells like a mushroom. And that's another one. And mainly uh, it's made, uh, produced by black koji mold. Uh, of course, white koji produced them, but the level of uh, amount. Uh, the black koji produce this octanol is more than white koji. And then you have a caramelized sugar smell. It's coming from saltan. That's a mixture of so many uh, things that you have to, uh, other fatty acid and other, other things like this, uh, 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 linolate and other uh, things, thing, uh, comp components or compounds reacting to each other and create those uh, uh, caramelized uh, flavor. And then you have a mouthfeel, the oily texture is coming from this. And, okay. And shochu regions. 
Short tree lesion, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be explaining is, uh, is mostly, uh, well, today it's uh, exclusively Kyushu. <laughs> uh, because that's the main place that you uh, that structure is produced. And there's a, a four ge geographic indication uh, the, that are approved by uh, WTO. And these are the four of them. So Ikishochu is coming from Nagasaki, Iki Island. Uh, it's a uh, barley shochu. And then you have Kuma shochu from Kumamoto. Uh, from Hitoyoshi uh, regions, which is Kome rice shochu. And you have Satsuma shochu, which is Imo from Kagoshima. And then you have Awamori from uh, Okinawa. So for rice shochu, it's usually, this is a generalization, but it's light to medium body, uh, the flavor of steamed rice cereal to elegant aroma with soft rounded mouthfeel light to complex flavor. It's coming from mainly coming from this Kuma regions, Kumamoto, okay? And then you have a barley, uh, as I mentioned, Iki, and also Oita is very famous. You know, famous brand would be that Ichiko is uh, number one barley uh, maker and Tsukushi is very good too. And usually it has a low set barley to floral fruity aroma and it has a very distinctive uh, the character from the, the barley with a well-rounded and a sweet flavor from barley, okay? You can uh, drink, uh, you can enjoy by on the locks and with cold water, it's popular. And next one is sweet potato. Uh, they are most likely mellow, rich flavor and well-rounded natural sweetness. And also all, uh, many of them has roasted a baked sweet potato aroma, or some of them, the lighter ones, or uh, it's more like talping means uh, rose petal flowery floral uh, aroma is coming out from, especially from sweet potatoes, okay? You can chill it on the locks or with cold water or with warm water, okay? And next, I'm fine. Uh, is there any question? It's okay. Keep going. Okay, kokuto shochu. Kokuto shochu is, means uh, brown sugar, and uh, it's coming from Amami Oshima. You think this is not uh, Okinawa, but it's not. Amami Oshima is a part of Kagoshima regions, and as you know, you have to use a koji if if. It is without koji, it's gonna become like uh, the, the like spirits you know is rum, right? But it has to use koji. Even though the uh, starch conversion is not, not ne necessary, but it is uh, regulated that way. So they can, uh, they, uh, kokuto shochu can be called shochu, okay? It's a little bit uh, drier side, despite its sweet flavor and aroma, and you can do it on the locks with cold water or with warm water. Many people misunderstand that the uh, kokuto shochu is coming from, uh, uh, the distilled from sh sugarcane juice. No, it's not from sugarcane juice. It's actually, you have to make a ground sugar first and then put it into the mash. And then the soba shochu. Soba shochu is buckwheat. Uh, you know, very, uh, uh, I know some of you have tasted the soba noodles, buckwheat noodles in Japan. Uh, it's the same ingredients we use. It is usually it's mellow or rich flavor and well-rounded, toasty, nutty, complex. And yeah, it's a toasty nuttiness or some of them has a peanuts uh, uh, smell like, okay. And this is very versatile too, chilled on the locks or with cold water or warm. It's mainly coming from Miyagi, uh, Miyazaki or uh, another famous region is the soba noodle uh, region, which is Nagano in mainland. And then uh, Awamori from Okinawa, okay? 
it's made from Thai rice. Remember, uh, they, we believe our shochu is coming from uh, Thailand and Amori is the origin, origin of uh, the shochu. That's, uh, so you have to use a Thai rice and also you have to use a black goshu. So for the kojiyam, um, both regular rice shochu and for the awamori, do they polish the rice for the koji? And for the mash? No, yes, you have to, uh, uh, you don't have to, but most of them are polished, even though, you know, the rice is different, especially Thai rice is, you know, uh, long grain rice, but it, it is polished. But uh, some, uh, rice shochu that we come shochu, uh, we they used to have some of the, the Kumamori region. I mean, still it's there, uh, the, uh, the Kume shochu regions, and the rice is pushed down uh, to you know seventy to ninety percent. Uh, you just need you just don't want to have too much uh, brown parts, which has the uh, proteins and lipids. But they used to have a brown. Uh, Brown brown rice brown rice uh, shochu made with the yellow rice yellow koji, and uh, that was how it was made before. And uh, some people are reviving those uh, uh, very tr old traditional rare uh, brown rice shochu with yellow koji. You know when the koji came from Okinawa. A black koji came from Okinawa to Kyushu before it was introduced to Kyushu, I mean, uh, to, to Kamoshima. Everybody was using yellow koji. Let's go back, think about this. Because yellow, we, uh, the, the history of shochu is only 500 years, right? But sake history is 2000 years old. So we've been making sake so yellow, using yellow koji, but then, you know, this region is much south and warm and humid. So uh, that the spoil and uh, the mash can be spoiled, spoiled because of uh, the bacteria can survive in a warm uh, area. And also yellow koji does not produce high level of acid, acid in the mash comparing to black koji and white koji. So uh, back in 200 years ago, so uh, they had a more spoilage, damaged mush. They couldn't uh, make anything. So they changed to black koji because black koji produced more acid and acid would protect yeast from bacteria. That's why uh, that, and you know, and also regular shochu and aomori shochu is a little bit different because there is a, you know, the shochu we just mentioned about sweet potato, barley, shochu, kome shochu is this this way, two, two steps. You have a primary fermentation starter and then you have a secondary fermentation. But for awamori, it's all one batch. I mean, you make a, a jasmine rice or long grain rice, uh, koji rice and put that in the tank and no addition at all and just, just, they just, uh, ferment by itself and then distillation going to distillation. And another thing, uh, sometimes uh, the aomori easy uh, is uh, makes that that uh, spirits a little bit different. Is this? They use this type of uh, horizontal uh, distillation machine. So what's going to happen is this: this area is much wider, so there will be more evaporation, but this parts to this arm, we call our lying arm, swan neck. If we, this is kind of short, right? Comparing to these long ones. So it goes out distill very easily without any going up and down and going up because this one is a little bit longer. The evaporation will go up, but at the same time, the temperature will change if it's the, uh, the, this neck is a little bit longer and 
the, the evaporation become liquid and it's going to drop down. So we call this, this reflux. If you have a more reflux, the spirits become lighter. But if you don't have so much like this one, you have a much more complex border taste. That's the, another thing that this uh, Aomori, but you know, not, not all of them use this type, but some of them are made this way. And Aomori's another uh, uniqueness on Aomori is they can, they, uh, can be aged and they use these techniques to have, you know, uh, father batch, which is the oldest one. Uh, no, 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 this is young. Oh, sorry, this one is oldest one, and this is youngest one. If you take out from this uh, barrel pot, clay pot, you have to add back, add second uh, youngest one to here. So you do this every time you take out from to consume you have to add it. And some of them are, are aged many a long, long time, like 30 years, but most of them like now is between uh, five and 10 years are more approachable because the longer age one is very, very expensive. If you want to get like 15 years age one, it's gonna cost you like $200, is $300. So you can have old one, uh, the, uh, the long aged uh, Aomori Kusu, but uh, it's very difficult to get to, uh, it's not approachable, it's too, sometimes it's too expensive. But in order to call Kusu, that Aomori has to be aged more than three years, okay? How do you drink it uh, in Japanese way? Um, many people dyed it with water, we call it mizuari, and sometimes uh, same amount, water and shochu same amount, but sometimes people like it a little bit stronger, six and fourth. And warm ones, you have to be careful. This is uh, the things I, I want you to take it home with you today, is that when you're making hot sho a warm shochu, you put the shochu second, I mean, at the last. So you, that means you put the hot water in the cup first, and then you pour shochu. The reason why is this, as I mentioned that the boiling, uh, boiling point of water against boiling point, uh, point of alcohol is different. Boiling point of alcohol is lower. So if you put shochu first and you put the hot water in here, it's gonna damage the spirits. So always you put the hot water first, even though it's boiled, as soon as it hits this glass, uh, the temperature will go down to about 80 centigrade. Then you can add shochu next. Uh, the, just to let you know that uh, alcohol boiling temperature is 78.3 uh, centigrade. So that's why it's, you don't want to damage them. But some people wants to have a little bit more bitterness or you uh, intentionally uh, damage uh, the shochu. Some people do that, but I don't recommend it uh, for the beginner, especially. And that's the proper, this is the proper way. So you put the hot water first and then pour shochu next. Or you can have this teapot like krochoka or choka, you can mix uh, the shochu and water a day before you are making uh, uh, your drink at the consuming. So if you're consuming it tomorrow, I mean, tomorrow, you have to make it to, to not tonight to uh, marry these two ingredients, which is water and uh, shochu and then warm it up. I'm sorry, this is wrong. This is not hot water. Regular water is fine. Just mix shochu and water the day before. I'm sorry, this is LR here. And then you warm it up and drink it. Or, you know, now, right now there are so many people are making cocktail. Uh, it's so versatile because you have different flavors. And also, uh, I didn't mention this, but the shochu before distilling alcohol 
contents is around 18 to 19%. But other drinks like whiskey and brandy uh, before the distillation is 8% to 10%. What does it mean? Is that when you distill them uh, for brandy and whiskey, which has a lower alcohol, you have to distill so, so uh, vigorously so to have a spirit coming out. But for shochu, you don't have to do that because that alcohol percentage is already 18% to, to can be a 20%. So you don't have to uh, distill so hard. And also, uh, that's the reason why we have so much flavor. Shochu has more flavor because you're not distilled so much and it retains the original flavor from the ingredients more. And then you, if you dilute them, even though you dilute them, you still have good extraction uh, of a uh, flavor from the, the original ingredients. And then if you're pairing with uh, 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 non-Japanese food, some of them are emo and steaks or barbecue or pizza. Here's a lasagna or with almond, it would be go good. And uh, like yesterday, we had a, uh, you know, uh, latte, which is pork, but it's this one is a pork chop. And mugi, you can have some smoked hamon, caviar, and komishochu, you can have, you know, uh, this one is all Japanese, but like carpaccios and, and so on. So I'm seeing that you can pair shochu with a lot more heavier foods. Um, we, we also have a question really quickly. Um, for adding umeboshi to oyuwari, when do you think is the proper time? Oh, when? In the, the season you're talking about? Is it? Uh, no, just like, I guess, in the time frame. So, you know, you put the water first. Oh, yeah, you can put the water first and you put the umeboshi inside. And then shochu last. Yes, and, and then you kind of like, you know, uh, moderate and you kind of like, you know, crush the ume a little bit. So you get more extraction for the ume. Uh, the ume. Sounds good. Um, and it's a very healthy, way, very healthy way to drink it. Definitely. And for the shochu pairings, um, it is a little bit higher in alcohol percentage, which is why it kind of goes better with richer foods. But what is the average um, alcohol by volume in shochu? Yeah, usually uh, it's 25%. And that's average, you know, and just some region is a little bit lower, but usually it's 25%. Of course, it can be, if it's not diluted one, we call it genshu, it can be, you know, 45%, but usually it's 25. Awesome, thank you so much. And as I, as she was mentioning, uh, shochu is also, uh, very healthy because it doesn't contain any sugar and the shochu is good for black circulation because there is a, a, some special enzyme uh, will melt down the black crop. We call it uh, rokinaze. It will be activated, activated by uh, some compounds in uh, shochu and will the enzyme become more active and then will melt down the black crop. And it's been proven by the doctors. And that's why some of the doctors uh, will recommend if you have diabetes or you have high blood pressure, but you must drink. Uh, don't drink uh, too much, but you can drink shochu and it's better than drinking other drinks. That's what the recommendation is. Of course, too much drinking is not good for you. And, oh, pretty close. So, that was a quick, very quick, 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 quick uh, review or a uh, 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 shochu and aomori seminar or session. But uh, from today's a kickoff, we have so many events. Uh, the one, the one, one of them are aomori sunrise. We're gonna have uh, Nick Kong, Christina Vela, Kelly Thorn uh, from. Uh, February 10th is Nick, and 17th is Christina, and March 3rd is Kelly from 
3 p.m. Pacific time and 6 p.m. Eastern time. And they're going to be introducing uh, their take of food pairing with non-Japanese food and maybe their uh, special cocktail. That's that. And also, ida san we have a, a non-shochu event too, right? We have a Kubota is coming up. Kubota uh, seminar, uh, webinar is coming up on this month too. When was this? Uh, so it's going on, yes, it should be on the 18th and we'll mm -hmm. have the information up for that soon. Mm -hmm. uh, the theme for this time is a day in the life of a Toji. So if you guys are interested, please uh, keep an eye out on our website and our social media. Yeah, and also uh, uh, during this month, uh, there is a special uh, online promotion done by uh, MMSake. They're offering 50% off. Uh, and here's a discount code, JCS15. That's where when you go to their website and they put this uh, uh, discount code, you get 50% off in Shochu and Aomori quality ones. You will enjoy it. And so, you know, just go back uh, one, a couple of things. You know, may, most of the Shochu is made in Kyushu and uh, average is average alcohol BP uh, uh, contents is 25%. And using koji, mainly black and white koji, and only one single distillation. And Aomori can be aged uh, using those, uh, you know, uh, similar to sherry uh, aging mature, maturing process. And uh, that has to be aged more than three years to call kusu. Okay. I hope uh, you learned some new thing, even though some of them are the shochu enthusiast and professional, and some of you are new to this, but I think uh, you learned something and you can spread uh, this, uh, whatever you learned today to your friends and families and colleagues. Thank you. Um, so I'm not sure if you want to do the Q&A first or you want to do the quiz first. Oh, uh, let's do quiz. Quiz, okay. I hope everybody took notes and you guys are ready. Um, so I know there have been issues with using the polls in the past. So if you are not able to uh, vote in the poll, you can go ahead and put it in the chat uh, because we want everybody to be able to have a chance to take it, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch the polling and you will have, what, two minutes, Gwen Yeah. All right, good luck, everybody. Again, if, every, if you answer all the questions correctly, you'll have a chance to win the free Shochu Advisor course from Sake School of America. Everybody is putting in their answers so fast. Well, wow, you guys you really started. paid attention. <laughs> Coming up on a minute here, you'll have another minute to go. We used, to have, we used to play, play music. <laughs> yeah, we used to play music during this. But we thought maybe a uh, hard rock would be a little distracting, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, 34 out of 40 have entered in. We have about 20 more seconds. So if you want to double check your answers, I don't know. <laughs> All 
we tried our best to drop a couple hints every now and then as to what he was going to uh, ask you guys. Because it is a lot of information to go through and take notes on as you're listening. All right, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the polling. And <laughs> do you wanna go through the answers right now, Inosan? Sure. Sure, okay. So, so oh, the first question was where the main region is. It's Kyushu, number four. And uh, next question was, what was the average uh, alcohol uh, uh, contents in uh, shochu is 25%. So your question should be number three. And how many times uh, shochu are distilled? As I said, it's once, number one. That's it. Very good. About 90%, a little bit more than 90% got everything correct, I believe. So you will find out. Uh, I will put, you, put your names into a random uh, pick generator. And then we will announce the winner through email. And we'll also put it on our um, Saki School of America website. We will contact you through email, the email that you uh, registered with. So please keep an eye out for that. And let's dive into the Q&As. There's a really interesting questions here. Um, Harold wants to know, for shochu and awamori, is the koji like a certain type of koji, like the sol hazegata type? Uh, yeah, I think it's depending on uh, when the most of the Aomori is a uh, sohazengata, but you know, depending on the uh, like some kome shochu uh, using Yamada Nishiki rice is exist, does exist. And in that case, you know, they might be using uh, East, uh, Ginjo East for usually used for sake. In that case, you know, it makes sense to, you know, uh, polish the rice like daikinjo, and then you have more tsuke hazegata, uh, and then you distill them. So, you know, it, it's up to what, kind, what style of shochu you want to make, especially with rice, but other ones, I, it doesn't make sense to uh, have sohazo because imo, imo itself is, you know, <laughs> doesn't have sohazo or anything, it's just haze. So, uh, you have to be careful with the level, but for Kome Shochu, yes. Great answer. I know that was a little bit technical, um, so not everybody really understood what Sohazegata is or that kind of koji, but uh, if you're interested, please take our sake advisor course <laughs> and you'll find out. Um, so a couple more questions. Do you know which best city consume the most Shochu? Oh, I'm sorry. Do, do you know which US cities other than LA and New York consume the most shochu? Oh. Other than LA and New York. Wow. Uh, it must be this side of the country, uh, Seattle or Oregon. If we have to take out the California, I mean, California and New York. I can definitely see Oregon being like that. They're pretty yeah. hip. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I had a good one. Um, do you see a trend in aging shochu? Yes. Uh, many shochu uh, has a color now, and some of them are aging the barrel, oak barrel, and maybe some of them use barrel and has a you know yellowish or to a golden a hue, a to color, as they becoming a very uh, popular for some people uh, because they taste like whiskey and very similar uh, flavor profile with, uh, with uh, whiskey and some people liking it. But for hard shochu drinker, no. <laughs> a lot of people said Chicago seems to uh, consume a lot of shochu. Mm. And I definitely agree. I think aging is like a big thing in general now, like in beer as well. That's becoming a big thing. Sake as well. People, a lot of like hobbyists are aging their sake and their private stashes. Um, let's see. 
I actually have a good question from Catherine. I, I like this one. Are there infused shochu like there are for other spirits, like vodkas, etc.? Ah, yes. Uh, some 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 shochu maker uh, you uh, makes a gin, putting a juniper berries, and some uh, other makers uses uh, like uh, shiso shiso leaves. And other people use ume. Some people use uh, some fruits like peach and oranges and yuzu. Yuzu is very popular uh, because it's Japanese citrus, similar to lime and lime and lemon. And those are the main one. And yeah, they, they are exp experimenting many new thing. And you should know there are, uh, uh, you know, Many, many ingredients you can use other than what I introduced today. You know, I just mentioned uh, five, uh, six ingredients, but you know, there are more. I mean, you can use 49 or more other ingredients, uh, like some of them are very uh, rare, but you know, uh, seaweed and milk and carrots and <laughs> there are so many things, but it's, it's, uh, it's there for some regional uh, shochu. But for infused one, yes, there are some uh, still make them. I mean, there is so many way of doing this. You can distribute them together or you infuse them afterwards. Or you can use it as an ingredient. I mean, there are so many ways. I think you're talking about infusion after distillation. Yes, there are too. <laughs> There are, I think there are a lot of um, American shochu brands popping up nowadays and they do make uh, their mash with like green tea or citrus and then they distill it. So you do get some notes from that. But as for infusing infusing, I don't think there are too many that do it in the US right now for shochu. Um, okay, and what is the difference between shochu and so uh, the Chinese character is the same. You know, the, it, it means uh, burned or uh, distilled uh, liquid or liquor is uh, the character we use. Pronunciation is different. But uh, Japanese shochu is uh, using single, a single pot still. And many of the many of uh, popular uh, soju is uh, using multiple uh, uh, continuous steel. So it's a, a little bit different. Uh, soju is more cleaner because they are taking out a lots of the uh, uh, original flavor and then become more pure uh, flavor, similar to vodka. But for shochu makers, they are trying to, as I said, they're trying to detain as uh, uh, the, the original ingredients flavor like sweet potato and barley. So uh, that's, we use a pot still and just distill once. Okay, so that's the difference there. And um, second part to that question, do people know the difference between soju and shochu? Personally, I've not met a lot of people who know the difference. Unfortunately not. And there are um, uh, more education uh, needed to be done by us. However, it's sometimes it's so disappointing. You know, you have uh, your students graduate from our school, uh, get a certification, and and I see them at the restaurant and say, "Oh, I'm drinking soju." I'm like, "No, you are drinking soju." <laughs> and I, you know, uh, it, it's it's just a, a popularity in the world. Uh, use uh, in U.S. is soju is more big. Yeah, and it's also just like a, it's a horrible thing that's happened, but it's in the United States, it's a legal uh, kind of thing where if it's 24% or lower, it must be labeled soju. And if it's 25% or higher alcohol, it must be lab labeled shochu. So it's, it's just kind of politics and things like that. Um, and we're coming around six o'clock here. Uh, we still have a lot of great questions. I think we'll actually try to answer these in the follow-up email so that um, everybody gets their questions answered because these are really great questions. Um, 
But let's end off with a pandemic related question. So how has the pandemic affected shochu imports? It seems much harder to find in middle America. Uh, of course, you know, it's not uh, increasing as last, comparing to last year, but it's not that, uh, doing not that bad. You know, uh, some of that, uh, 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 some of the restaurants are struggling and, you know, some of the accounts are not saying as used to be, but uh, it's doing okay. I mean, surprising, surprisingly, uh, retail shop and many online shop and um, even the shochu is selling well in, especially in the retail shop, supermarkets, Japanese supermarkets is mainly the one. And, and they're doing very well because people wants to get drunk. I'm sorry, <laughs> get, get relaxed. And be, this, uh, you, they want to take out their stress out. We call it dareyame. They want to, you know, uh, distress themselves. So, uh, you know, people tend to drink more during the COVID. Okay, all right. So Harold had to leave. Thanks for joining us, Harold. Um, let's go ahead. Like I said before, in the follow up email, we're going to try to send you whatever we can for the slides, and we're going to try to answer as many questions as possible, as well as announce the winner from the quiz. Okay. Uh, so let's just hear our final remarks from Kimura san. Did you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, not so far. Thank you so much for your uh, presentation, Mr. Ueno. And yeah, actually, uh, I got a short advisory uh, course uh, by Mr. Ueno, but uh, I learned again about short Yeah, thank you so much for your presentation today. Thank you for joining us. And Ueno-san, did you have any final remarks before we say goodbye? No, I just want to say thank you, everyone, uh, to participate in this event. Uh, we'll have more to come this, this month. And please looking forward to, uh, to that. And I'll see you sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you. And if you guys didn't win the Shochu Advisor course, you do have three more times to win if you join our Awamori Sunrise sessions. <laughs> All right, everybody, good night. And thank you for joining us. Bye. Drink responsibly. Bye. <laughs>